Welcome to Chemical Reactions. My name is Dr. English and today we're going to be talking about single replacement reactions. Specifically, we're going to look at a general overview of single replacement reactions, symbolic representation of these types of reactions, practice with single replacement reactions, and then even more practice with single replacement reactions. General overview of single replacement reactions. How does one recognize that a single replacement reaction will actually occur? That's what we're trying to figure out today. Reactants almost always contain one free element, so an element by itself, and one ionic compound dissolved in water, and we already know that aqueous means AQ. In a single replacement reaction, metals will typically replace metals and nonmetals will typically replace nonmetals. Now, of course, there's an exception to the rule, but we'll get to that later. A more reactive element will replace a less active element. So we are going to use Table J in your New York State reference tables to figure this out. So if we look at Table J, our most active metals and nonmetals are at the very top of the table, and they make sense. If we look at the metals, we're looking at elements that come from group one, a little bit of group two right here because we know that the reactivity of metals will typically decrease as you go across a period from left to right and increase as you go down a group. And then we get into some of our transition metals in the middle. And then finally, some of our less active metals near the end, and then our coinage metals, which are definitely not active, things like copper and silver and gold, things that we can actually wear and not have to worry about reactivity. The same thing goes for your nonmetals. The most active nonmetal is, of course, fluorine, and the least active nonmetal will be iodine. So when we talk about a more active element replacing a less active element, what we're looking for is elements at the top of the table replacing elements lower on the table. So I could say, well, cesium can replace aluminum because cesium is higher up on the table than aluminum. But copper cannot replace iron. That cannot happen because iron is lower on the table. Same thing goes with your nonmetals. Fluorine can replace chlorine, or it can replace bromine, or it can replace iodine in a single replacement reaction, but bromine cannot replace fluorine. So you can only go from the top of the table to the bottom of the table in terms of an effective single replacement reaction occurring. General overview of single replacement reactions. Symbolically, we're looking at a situation where A plus BX yields AX plus B. So in other words, A is coming in as a more active element and kicking out B. So B is now by itself and A hooks up with X, usually represented as some ionic formula. As we know, these are typically aqueous solutions and most of the time these are going to be very, very soluble. Let's look at an example. Magnesium plus copper two sulfate. Magnesium is more active than copper 2 sulfate. If we were to look at table J, we would see that magnesium is at the top and copper is much lower. So magnesium has the ability to come in and kick out the copper. The copper is now represented by itself and the magnesium is hooking up with the sulfate to form magnesium sulfate. That is how symbolically we would represent this single replacement reaction. If we were to look at this from a perspective of a nonmetal, again, we'd go to table J and we would find chlorine. And we would see, can chlorine replace iodine? And we see that it can. So chlorine comes in and it kicks out the iodine. The iodine will be represented as a diatomic. So we see it as I2 here because that is its most stable form. Then the potassium will hook up with the chlorine to be represented as potassium chloride. Let's look at some examples. Zinc plus silver nitrate. Will the reaction occur? Let's look at table J. Here's the location of zinc. Here's the location of silver. We can see that zinc is higher than silver. So will this reaction occur? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So our ionic reactant, that's what we're talking about here. This is our ionic reactant. 
So we have AG plus one, and our ion is going to be NO3 minus one. Our ionic product is going to be the zinc because we know it's going to be replacing the AG. So we know that the charge on zinc is Zn plus two and NO3 minus one. So if we write that as a formula, we will get Zn NO3 two. And then our elemental product is the silver by itself, which can be represented as AG. So our final reaction will be Zn plus AgNO3 yields ZnNO32 plus Ag. Now the question is, is it balanced? And if you can look at it, you'd say, no, it's not. Because we can see that the polyatomic nitrate is not balanced. We have two NO3s on the product side. We need to get two NO3s on the reactant side. So now those are balanced, but now we've got to balance the AGs. We have two silver on our reactant side. We need to put a two in front of the AG to balance that on our product side. And then finally, we look at our zinc. We have one zinc on the product side, one zinc on the reactant side, and we can see that it is now balanced. Let's look at another example. We have gold plus KNO3, potassium nitrate. Will this reaction occur? So if we look at table J and we look at the location of AU and we look at the location of potassium, we can see that gold cannot replace the potassium. Therefore, will this reaction occur? No. So on your homework, nothing is going to be put in any of these spots because the reaction is not happening. It's just going to stay as is. If you were to drop gold into a solution of potassium nitrate, no reaction would happen. The gold would just sit on the bottom because gold is not a reactive element. Leave it alone. Don't fill it in. Let's look at another reaction. We have aluminum plus sulfuric acid, which we know is H2SO4. The real question here is what exactly is aluminum replacing? So let's look at table J. You'll notice that on table J in the metals column, there is a nonmetal, and that nonmetal is, of course, hydrogen. Hydrogen is known as the standard by which all reactivities of metals is based upon. So hydrogen, even though it is a nonmetal, is in the metals column. So we treat it like another metal in terms of activity. So can aluminum replace hydrogen? Yes, it can. So when we talk about our ionic reactant here, we're going to treat the hydrogen as an ion, and we'll see later on in the year why this happens when we talk about acids and bases. But we're going to say the hydrogen ion, H plus one, don't bring the little two with you. No, don't do that. Because that two is coming from SO4 minus two. Now, the ionic product means that the aluminum is going to come in and kick out the hydrogen. Bye-bye, hydrogen. So the aluminum, which we know has a charge of plus three, is now going to hook up symbolically with the SO4 minus two. We're going to cross these down, and we're going to get the equation Al2 parentheses SO4 three. And our elemental product here, this is key, is going to be H2 because it is diatomic hydrogen and this is critical critical to write it as diatomic hydrogen because now we need to balance this thing and so we're going to go back to our original reactants Al plus H bring back the two that I crossed out that was silly H2SO4 yields Al2SO43 plus H2. Now what we need to do finally is to balance this and again I would start with the polyatomics. So we have three sulfate on the product side, three here because we see that little subscript to three. So I'm going to put a three in front of the H2SO4. So now I have three sulfate ions on my reactant side. Now let's look at the hydrogen. 
We have six hydrogens on the reactant side. I need to get six hydrogens on my product side. I'm going to put a three in front of the H2. Now the H's are balanced. Finally, we have to look at the aluminum. On my product side, I have two aluminum here, and so I need to put a coefficient of two here. And now, thank goodness, I have two Al plus three H2SO4 yields Al2SO4 three plus three H2, and I have a balanced equation. Let's look at our last reaction, Cu plus H2O. Will this reaction occur? So again, we look at table J, we find the location of Cu, we find the location of H, and we realize that Cu is lower on table J than H is. So will this reaction occur? No, it will not. So again, do not put anything in these spaces because the reaction is not happening. Not happening. So if you drop a copper BB into liquid water, there is no reaction. No reaction will occur. The copper is not a reactive metal. It will just sit at the bottom of your beaker. And that's it. No reaction. So what did you learn? We did a general overview of single replacement reactions. We talked about the symbolic representation of, of single replacement reactions. We had some practice with single replacement reactions, and then we had even more practice with single replacement reactions. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.